It was a deal that almost went up in smoke, but after sweetening the pot, Canimed Therapeutics has agreed to be taken over by Aurora Cannabis. Aurora struck a friendly deal valued at $1.1 billion to buy Canimed. The deal brings an end to a hostile takeover battle between the two medical marijuana companies. Aurora's CEO of the joint venture says, we are very pleased to have come to terms with Canimed on this powerful strategic combination that will establish a best-in-class cannabis company with operations across Canada and around the world. Besides providing me with lots of puns, the deal is creating a lot of wealth for Canimed shareholders. Its stock jumped 15% today on the news. Aurora shares opened relatively flat, but fell throughout the day. Now, for more on this deal, we're joined by Chris Damas, the editor of the BCMI Cannabis Report. Chris, I think there we have you. Chris, uh, how important, because this deal was controversial, it caused a lot of backing and forthing. How important was it to these two parties to get a deal like this done? Well, actually, I think, I think we're making a little bit too much out of this deal, Peter. In Aurora Cannabis's own filing, uh, recently, they said that they had no compunction to buy Canamed, a shareholder, a uh, shareholder of one of the four gang of four, I call them, the dissidents who didn't like Canamed and its uh, proposed deal with Newstrike, came to Aurora, and Aurora cooked up the uh, friendly offer uh, released on November 14th in the matter of four days. So this is a deal of happenstance, and I would add that the Canamed conundrum of being a small market cap, ironically caused by these four shareholders owning 38% of the stock, was one of the reasons why Canamed stock could never get out of the blocks. So ironically, this deal was, uh, I would say, uh, an accident of errors. And, uh, and yet here yeah. we have, though, uh, a company the size of Aurora, one of the biggest market caps in the country, taking on another $1.1, $1 billion worth of market value. It, it, this age of consolidation, uh, it, it feels like in the, the marijuana industry in Canada, as we head towards legalization of recreational marijuana in the summer, it feels like that age of consolidation is now fully upon us. Well, if you give me enough monopoly money, I can buy Park Place and Boardwalk. <laughs> Okay, I mean, the whole market why is it monopoly money? Because I've heard people well, talk about this before. Let, let, let's have this part out here. Okay, well, everyone compares this to the dot-com era. I was there from 95 to 2001, and for a few years it was great. I had stocks that I bought at $3 go to 30 So this is a, a, the reason why is the unquantifiable upside of cannabis, not only in Canada, but now globally with forecasts that the market's worth 80 billion US. So investors are caught up in all the hysteria. You buy the romance and then ultimately reality sets in, which we won't know about until the end of this year, at least as far as Canada's concerned. But I, so, I, uh, in the, yeah, go ahead. Well, the, the, these companies have an intrinsic value. I mean, the, there is going, there is a market today. That market is going to expand considerably on July first. The the rise in value may not match quite what that increase in value in reality is. But there has been unquestionably a big boost to the value, the underlying value of these companies, hasn't there? Well, value in the stock market and sustainable long-term business franchises are something different, and I spend most of my career studying those differences. I think most of us, and I, for one, believe that the top four would get position in this market. Distribution in business is almost everything. You can buy a company, a greenhouse, uh, you can buy infrastructure, you can even buy master growers. So this is not an easy business, but uh, being smart entrepreneurs, people have figured it out. So the main thing is supply agreements, exclusivity, and these sorts of things. And uh, commodity bud is going to go to one or two bucks a, a gram. So shelf space and distribution are key. So the top four are going to do the best. And, you know, the smaller players are riding the wave of investor enthusiasm. And so if you're the, the, the individual investor at home listening to a pro like you compare this to the dot-com bubble where they probably lost a bit of money themselves, comparing this, the money at play here to monopoly money, what should the individual investors do? Especially as they see the market caps continue to grow. The consolidation of these companies really come at billion-dollar deals. Well, look it. 
Sometimes I wonder why we be why we buy stocks after four year bear market in oil and gas. You 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 forgot why you do this for a living. But when you see, see stocks going up 10 percent a, a day, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You could throw a dart and probably hit a winner in cannabis. And I think that'll continue for another six months, eight months. So. We enjoy it while we can because we know we'll have losses eventually. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary did quite fine during the dot-com uh, bubble, by the way. So the main, main thing is to know when to get out, start liquidating. All right, Chris, powerful insights, uh, subject for <laughs> some further debate, I'm sure. Thanks for making the time. Chris Davis is the well, editor of the BCMI Cannabis Report.